spoilage and curse from a magical point of view. Let's consider this matter from a magical point of view. The thing is that there is a rule that says that no one can perform a spoilage or a curse, that is a program, an energy informational influence, without a reason. That's impossible. There must be a reason, there must be a fault. A spoilage and a curse are a way to bring someone to justice. And sometimes the harm and damage is so great that not just one person, but all their blood relatives down to a certain generation are brought to justice until they pay for the damage. But this is only the case if the party who has been harmed has suffered a real loss of rights. For example, the Red Army came, expropriated property, killed everyone, and the only woman who survived told this Red Army soldier with all her heart everything she thought about the Red Army, about him, his mother, his aunt, and all the other members of his family. This woman really experienced a great loss of her rights. She didn't give them up voluntarily. She was subjected to violence. And there is a rule that says you can only give up your rights voluntarily. If someone takes away your rights by force, sooner or later, they will have to pay. So this woman cursed the soldier, and if his energy, time, life, health and other resources weren't enough to pay for her diminished rights, his children will have to pay. Accordingly, when we remove a curse or spoilage from a person, first of all we remove the information, the information about the cause of the curse, that is, we remove the seal of debt. There is always such a seal. And how can you remove that seal? You should have the right to do so. You must determine the price of the matter. And your own force can help you do that. The curse can be removed from a person, but if he or his children haven't paid in full, they'll have to give up a million hours of their time, several years of their lives, to pay for the rights they've diminished. Accordingly, the price of the matter will be either his time or the monetary equivalent of his time. For example, how much time he would have spent in order to earn that amount of money. And if he has to spend five years of his life on it, that's how much he has to give. He will pay for the damage out of how much an hour of his work costs. And it's actually a very simple calculation, it's really very simple. And a mage, a witch, or a sorcerer, who truly works with a direct channel of force, will receive this information, as they say, without distortion. So if you undertake to remove a curse from someone, and you do it out of the kindness of your heart, remember that you are always doing it at your own expense. And if you remove the curse, but don't receive the full amount for your work, you will be the one who has to pay the rest. Everyone knows this. Anyone who has started to practice witchcraft has usually started with this approach. All right, why don't I try to remove energetic damage from my friend? And then they got a very strong backlash. Why did you get a backlash? Not because you were being punished, but because you were able to remove it and you did it well, you are good at it, you can do it. But what about the price? Who will pay for it? You used five pounds of magic energy, that's got to be worth something. It takes a lot of energy to remove the seal of a debt, to remove the seal of a curse from a person. This energy could have been used for more constructive purposes than freeing a cursed person from the effects of a curse. Perhaps this person is someone important in the world who deserves to be freed from the curse? Perhaps the universe has special plans for him? No, he's nobody, just an ordinary person who represents nothing, who doesn't want to learn, who doesn't draw conclusions, who thinks everyone owes him something, who generally behaves like everyone else. So why waste energy on him? Why not spend it on a brilliant chess player who, because of the same curse, was born with a family disease, let's say cerebral palsy? Why waste energy on him? Just because he softened your heart? Then pay for him yourself. Do you get the logic? It's very simple.
Therefore, dear practitioners, if there are any of you here, carefully determine the price of the matter. It is better to ask your force 20 times than to make a mistake that you will have to pay for later.